Welcome back everyone to the series about compilers and programming languages. And today I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, recursive descent parsing and uh, top-down parsing. And if you haven't watched my previous videos on, on context-free grammars and, and about eliminating left recursion, please do that before watching this video because I think that makes sense first to see what, how to handle that. And this is an example of such a grammar here where we have additions, multiplications, numbers, and parentheses. And there is no left recursive term, as you can see here. To do this, we are going to implement this using a pseudo code, uh, and we are going to use a kind of a functional style. So you can implement this in any kind of language that you want, but uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward to do in, in, a, in a functional way. Uh, so we have first uh, a number of elements uh, the to describe the data structure of the tokens coming in. So this is uh, algebraic data types describing the tokens, and it's basically like enums in, 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 in C or something similar. And you can see here that we have different kinds of tokens. We have an add token, which will correspond to this symbol, uh, this uh, terminal symbol. Mal will correspond to this one. Num int corresponds to this one. So you can see here also that a number is actually carrying the actual integer value. Then you have a left parenthesis, right parenthesis, corresponds to these ones, and then a token for saying end of file or end of the stream. What we're returning back is an abstract data type. And the kind of elements we have here is an expression add, an expression mole, and a number. So this will form the actual tree where we have get rid of all everything, the parse tree and all other information that is not interesting from the, from the concrete syntax. And we just return an abstract syntax tree. And you can see here that this is an algebraic data type that is recursively defined. So you have the expressions referring to themselves. Let's put them here in the corner so we can use them all the time when we are looking at the actual code. So the first part here is a parse function. So you have a main function that is called to do the parsing. And this function should then in the end return an expression of this form. So you will just get a, a tree back with addition, multiplication, and numbers that you can then later on you know, evaluate or, or do something with. This parse function then, we have one side effect. And then you don't have to implement this using a side effect, but it's, it's kind of simpler when we just want to show it here. So we have a function called get token that gets the next token in the stream of tokens. So you call this get token and you get it here in the next. Then we call parse expression. So this is the, uh, the function that corresponds to the, this production here, parse an expression. And we'll come to that function after, after this one. And you, what you provide is the next token. So you always provide the next token uh, when you're calling these functions. And the parse expression function returns uh, the token, the look ahead token that we are looking at, and the expression so far. So when this function returns in the end, we will have a complete parsed expression if it doesn't fail. Right. So you get this back, and then we just check here in the end also that we have reached to a token end of file, so that if we come back here and we do not, we have not done that, then we actually have a parse error, and then we report an error. Otherwise, we return expression, which is the final expression that is parsed. So let's look into parse expression. So parse expression corresponds to this production here, right? So it's just one, uh, one production. So it takes as input uh, the next token. And what does it do? Well, it just follows the right-hand side. And this is the way you write the recursive descent parse. You just have to write an a function for each non-terminal, basically. So here we got a, a first, it says that, well, parse this first term. So it does that, parse term, and then it provides the token directly. And what we get back then is the end expression from this parse and the next token, so to token two. So somewhere inside here in parse expression, it will call uh, get token several times and the we will always look have one token that we're looking at head on, and that will be the ones that were returned here. And as you see, for after term, it will do the parse expression prime, and we just call that function, parse expression prime, same 
same way here, but we have the token too. And we also provide here the expression, uh, this expression that we have parsed so far. And this, and this is the trick that I talked about in a previous video, because this grammar uh, is not left recursive. We have eliminated uh, left recursion, but that results in that we actually get uh, right associativity. And the trick here is how we provide this uh, expression and then when we generate them back the AST, so we get still a left associativity in, in our terms. So we see here that we provide this expression uh, when we are calling parse expression prime. So let's look at parse expression uh, again. So this is what we just looked at and now parse expression prime, which is corresponds to these productions. So you can see here all the time when we are implementing these functions, they really correspond to the grammar. So we have this part expression prime, and now we have token and expression. And then we check if this token is a token add. As you can see, the, the next token is an add. If that is the case, we go into this part, and then it corresponds to this line. If it's not, we have just one option, and that is to, to return an empty. And you see here, we're returning the empty we do here, but just returning the token we got and the expression. So then we are not creating any more AST nodes. But look at, now let's look at this case here, plus term expression prime. So we expect that we are going to do this in turn. First, we're going to check this plus, then we are going to recursively do on, 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 on term and then on expression prime. So we checked first, token add, and then we get the next token because we have now consumed one token, we have to get a new one. That Call, well, let's call that next. And then we call parse term on next, which is this one corresponds to this one. And we get back the expression here and the next token. So this corresponds to parse term here. And then we take the last one is this expression prime and we simply call recursively ourselves because we are in expression prime. And then we have this token too which was the last token that we picked out. And here you see how we now construct the, the, uh, the AST nodes that we're returning. So we are constructing expression add, this one expression add from expression, which comes from above and expression two, which comes from here. And this is the reason why we then get the right associativity. So we had we received the expression from the previous one. The previous one that was parsing, that's why we have the left-hand side is this one, which comes from above. And then we have part expression prime, and this is the right-hand side. And then we generate this new expression, which we will then pass to expression prime again, which becomes, and this expression prime now, this one will becomes then the left-hand side. So this is how we keep on having the right structure. For terms here, it's actually exactly the same way. So you, we, you can look into this code, but it it's, has exactly the same structure as for expression expression prime. We just replace here that we are in the end uh, calling parse factor, for example, instead uh, of, of term that we did before. So there is nothing new here. So it's a pretty repetitive, repetitive task to, to, to do this. And that's why we have also parser generators. Right. The last one is factor, which is a little bit more complicated. And here we are parsing a, a factor like this. So we have the parse factor with a token. We also have the look ahead token here. And then we check, is this token a number like this? And this corresponds to this part of, of the actual grammar. If that is the case, we should get the next token as we always do, and then return expression number, expression number, which corresponds to the integer number, right? If it's not, then we match again for token and check if it's a left parenthesis. And this is the case here, right? Is this, do we have an actual parenthesis as a token? If that is the case, we get the next token as usual, and then we parse expression. So you see here how we recursively parse this expression here. So we're recursively calling ourselves here now. 
so that you can have expressions, any expressions within parentheses. And then you to do this again here, you to you check here if the next token is token right parentheses, right? And we get the next token. And then we just return this expression that we got. So we're getting rid of, of all, both the left and right parentheses. So you can see here that, for example, if it was not the right, uh, right parentheses, we report an error because then we have, have not balanced parentheses if there's something else. So we need to return a parse error. And the same thing here, if it's not a token number corresponding to this production here, or a left parse, uh, left, left parenthesis like this, then it's also parse error. So then we are covering, have covered all cases and using this information and how to eliminate the left recursion and then to recover the right associativity here, um, we can do a complete recursive descent parsing. Thank you. So again, thanks for listening. And I hope that uh, this uh, video was useful for you. Thank you. If you like this video, please subscribe and add a comment and tell me more about what you want to learn about compilers and programming languages.